Element T. DrinkElement.com slash Huberman. It's called Element, L-M-N. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink. It's said to be a game changer for focus, hydration, performance, and energy. Drinking regular water isn't enough anymore, and you need to sprinkle some electrolytes in there. So to make sure that I'm getting proper hydration and electrolytes, I personally dissolve one packet of Element in about 16 to 32 ounces of water. So in this video, I'm going to review Element T, and I'm going to talk about its evidence regarding exercise performance and even things like hypertension and all-cause mortality. So make sure you click like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Let's start by looking at the ingredients of Element T. Basically, it's a stick of electrolyte powder that contains 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's flavored with stevia and natural flavors, which is why it tastes sweet and not very salty. That's quite a hefty amount of sodium. 1000 milligrams, that's equivalent of 2.5 grams of salt. The American Heart Association recommends keeping the daily sodium intake below 2300 milligrams, or 5.8 grams of salt. A single satchel of Element T covers nearly half of that. And a lot of people might be taking several satchels per day. Is that bad for your health? How is this going to affect your blood pressure? On the LMNT website, you can find a graph from a study that claims the sweet spot for minimizing heart attack and stroke risk was seen at an intake of 4 to 6 grams of sodium per day. This graph is from a 2011 JAMA observational study of two cohorts, which included over 28,000 participants. This was just a single study from 2011, and this is what they're claiming to be a science-based recommendation. You can find any study to support your narrative or your views, which is why you have to look at multiple studies. In this 2014 study, from circulation, each 1 gram per day increment in sodium excretion was associated with a 14% increase in the risk of coronary heart disease. As a caveat, the subjects in this study were with already existing hypertension. But the point is that there are many studies that directly contradict the main paper LMNT is using in their marketing. Another 2022 meta-analysis of 9 studies on over 645,000 people found a linear relationship between sodium excretion and the risk of cardiovascular events. This is a much larger study with a much larger amount of people than the 2011 JAMA study, and it directly contradicts LMNT's claims. So it's not really like a science-based recommendation in terms of risk of heart disease. This doesn't mean that the LMNT is going to harm people because a lot of the people who are consuming LMNT are physically active people, so they might need more sodium because they're sweating a lot. We're going to cover the aspect of exercise and sweating shortly, but it's important to get to the bottom of sodium intake and mortality because it's quite important. So what does the evidence say about salt intake and risk of all-cause mortality? This is a bit of a tricky situation because excess salt intake does increase the risk of hypertension and people with high blood pressure have been seen to have a higher risk of mortality and heart disease if they consume a large amount of salt. And when we're talking about reducing the risk of mortality, then reducing the risk of hypertension and heart disease is very important because these conditions are one of the main leading causes of death. Meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials have found that reducing sodium intake to less than 2000 milligrams a day versus over 2000 milligrams a day decreases blood pressure. A 2020 meta-analysis of 133 randomized controlled trials on over 12,000 people saw a dose-response relationship between sodium reduction and lowering of blood pressure, especially among older individuals and those with already higher blood pressure. This means that if you have elevated blood pressure, then reducing your sodium intake is one of the most effective ways to lower your blood pressure. And the reduction happens in a dose-specific manner. The lower your sodium intake, the lower your blood pressure typically will be. When it comes to longevity and actual all-cause mortality risk, then it is even more complicated. People who restrict their sodium intake usually have higher levels of blood pressure, and because of their higher level of blood pressure, they are at a higher risk of mortality as well. And people who exercise and people who have a normal blood pressure typically don't restrict their sodium intake. That's why you see in a lot of observational studies a U-shaped association between sodium intake and death with both low, less than 2600 milligrams a day, and high, over 4900 milligrams a day, sodium being linked to greater risk of mortality. A 2021 study in the European Heart Journal looked at 181 countries across the world and saw that sodium intake was positively correlated with greater life expectancy and inversely associated to all-cause mortality. The lowest all-cause mortality was observed at a sodium intake of 4,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day. That's nearly double the recommendations of the World Health Organization and American Heart Association. However, these findings have to be taken with a grain of salt, pun intended, because the people who reduce their sodium are probably the ones that also have higher levels of blood pressure. It doesn't mean that if you have normal blood pressure that eating 2,000 milligrams of sodium in would be increasing a risk. It probably actually would reduce it even more because your blood pressure would be slightly lower. 
the main point is that if you have higher blood pressure or you're at a higher risk of heart disease, then the majority of evidence suggests that you're better off by restricting your sodium intake to less than 2300 milligrams per day. If you're exercising, then you can get away with a lot more. So how does sodium affect physical performance? Are there any benefits to consuming this kind of electrolytes? It's estimated that an hour of intense sweating, such as during exercise or when taking a sauna, can result in excretion of sodium as low as 292 milligrams per liter of sweat and up to 8600 milligrams per liter. If you're exercising regularly and using the sauna frequently, then you can excrete well above the recommended limit for sodium of 2300 milligrams a day. If you're also eating a minimally processed food diet, then you might only get about 1500 milligrams per day of sodium from your diet, even if you salt your food. The most common reason for exercise associated hyponatremia isn't loss of sodium via sweat, but the overconsumption of water. To prevent that, the easiest thing to do is to just drink according to thirst. Adding electrolytes and salt can help with that, but the main issue is just drinking too much regular water and thus excreting the electrolytes. This is something that you don't need an electrolyte powder for either. You can easily replenish all the electrolytes that you lost from exercise with your food and by just adding regular salt to your food. Paying extra money for electrolytes isn't necessary, although LMNT isn't claiming that you need their electrolytes either. They're just providing a convenient product that you can consume quickly and it's also tasty. I think one of the biggest reasons LMNT is so popular is because it tastes good. It's sweetened with stevia and it has different kinds of flavors like watermelon and orange, so it's much tastier than regular regular salt or some other kind of electrolyte powders. It almost feels like a guilt-free pleasure because you're getting your electrolytes and you're drinking this thing that tastes like orange juice. And if you've ever tasted unflavored electrolytes, then yeah, it's a massive difference because the unflavored electrolytes, they taste like dog shit. So you don't need to use electrolyte powders to replenish your sodium as long as you're eating a balanced diet and as long as you're, you know, salting your food slightly. But consuming sodium mixed with water before workouts has been seen to enhance performance. I talk a lot about it in my book Win, and there are quite a lot of studies showing that pre-hydrating with salt before exercise boosts blood plasma volume, reduces your core temperature, reduces loss of salt via sweat, and increases physical performance. In one study, 13 trained female cyclists cycled at 70% of VO2 max at 32 degrees Celsius until exhaustion. The first group took a high salt solution with 2300 milligrams of sodium. The second group took a low salt solution with only 144 milligrams of sodium. Both solutions were mixed in about 21.6 ounces or 638 milliliters of water and they consumed it over 60 minutes, one hour and 45 minutes before exercise. On average, those drinking the high salt solution were able to cycle 20 minutes longer. Similar benefits were found in eight trained male runners running to exhaustion at 70% of EO2 max in 32 degrees Celsius, 2800 milligrams of sodium versus 174 milligrams in 25 ounces of water. On average, those drinking the high salt solution were able to cycle 20 minutes longer longer. Part of the benefits of pre-hydrating with salt before exercise is that it lowers your core temperature and thus you can exercise for longer. So taking 1 to 2000 milligrams of sodium mixed in about 600 milliliters of water 1 to 2 hours before prolonged exercise can be a good exercise performance boost. And because you're sweating about the same amount and even more during the exercise, it's not going to affect your blood pressure. If you're not exercising then I wouldn't recommend consuming this amount of sodium because you don't need it and it might raise your blood pressure. Because most people don't need extra sodium into their diet. They're already consuming adequate amounts of sodium from their diet and potentially too much sodium. Adding a thousand milligrams of sodium from this single satchel will probably be too much for the sedentary person, but it might be enough or even better for a person who is exercising or sweating a lot. So how much sodium should you consume per day? I think it depends on your baseline blood pressure, risk of heart disease, and how much you exercise or sweat via the sauna. If your blood pressure is normal or even on the lower end and you exercise every day, then you might indeed need 4,000 to 5,000 milligrams of sodium. But even then, eating 2,000 milligrams of sodium for people who exercise isn't harmful and it probably would lower the blood pressure. To bring it back to LMNT, then in my opinion, it should be thought of as a workout supplement, not necessarily like a daily electrolyte drink. Ingesting 1000 milligrams of sodium is something that the average person doesn't need because number one, they're not exercising or sweating to lose the sodium. Number two, their blood pressure or body weight might be suboptimal, which is why they would benefit from a lower daily sodium intake. And number three, LMNT consists of predominantly sodium, which is what most people are getting too much of already. And it contains virtually no potassium or magnesium. This is one of the biggest disappointments for me because the potassium and magnesium are so low. They're almost like an afterthought and there to increase the value of the label. But the amounts are so small that they're practically insignificant. 
When it comes to physical performance, then you don't need a lot of potassium or magnesium, and you lose a much smaller amount of these minerals in your sweat as well. That's why there's such a heavy emphasis on sodium in element T. You lose a lot of sodium in your sweat during exercise, and sodium is the most important electrolyte for physical performance. But it's not the most important electrolyte that people would need on a daily basis. Most people are actually magnesium deficient, and they're not getting the optimal amounts of potassium. Whereas most people aren't deficient in sodium at all, they're getting almost twice the amount of recommended sodium. If I was in charge, I would actually create two versions of element T. One, the pre-workout element T, which is the current version with 1000 milligrams of sodium. And then the second version would be a daily element T satchel that would maybe have 200 milligrams of sodium, 1000 milligrams of potassium, and 200 milligrams of magnesium, for example. Or at least you would definitely reduce the sodium and increase the magnesium content. And I do use element T myself. I have a few satchels for traveling because it does indeed taste great. And it is useful for pre-hydrating before exercise. But I rarely use it when I'm not exercising. Overall, my rating for element T on a scale of 1 to 5 would be 4. It's good that it doesn't contain any garbage ingredients and it just contains sodium, potassium, magnesium and some natural flavorings, but I wouldn't take it if I'm not exercising. So it is useful as a pre-workout satchel or if you're sweating a lot via the sauna, but I don't think it's something that many people would need as a daily electrolyte drink. That's it for this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.